Smith and Tottenham involved in that goalless draw, so a point apiece. A similar story uh, at Goodison between Everson and Southampton. That finished one each. Danny Ings on the score sheet once again for the Saints before Richarlison equalised uh, for the Toffees and with United registering yet another big win. The latest, a 3-0 victory at Aston Villa. And so as a result then, well, United go to 58 points, six clear of Wolves and to within a point of fourth place Leicester, who incidentally they play on the final day of the season at the King Power Stadium. They're going to take some stopping in their bid for a top four finish. Uh, Bournemouth's draw means that they swap places with Aston Villa in the bottom three. They go 18th to within three points of Watford and West Ham and safety. Villa 19th, four points adrift with four games to play. It could go right down to the wire. Excellent performance. That makes Manchester United the first team in Premier League history to win by three goals or more in four consecutive games. Does that put in perspective just how good Manchester United are right now? We, we're really pleased with, uh, with ourselves, but we know we have to carry on as well. We, uh, we talk before the game, we talk in training that we have to carry on. That's, why, that's what Manchester is. It's a big club and uh, we want to keep the level up always. And the, the performance today and the past few weeks, they are, they, are, they are very good and they are the standard of Manchester United, I think. Is that the balance though? Hit the heights but keep your feet on the ground? Always. We never, I mean, we didn't win the Premier League. I mean, that's the, that's the goal. And uh, we didn't win anything this year. So obviously we have to keep working. There's a lot to do, a lot. Your first goal of the season? Good moment for you. Looks like you placed it beautifully. Uh, yeah, uh, today was uh, I was I just had uh, one shot and uh, I kind of know the goalkeeper and uh, been trying trying in training to been trying the this last games that to score a goal he didn't come and today he arrived and I'm really pleased to to help the team as uh, much as I can. You're a senior pro by comparison. What is it like to play alongside Mason Greenwood? This teenage sensation. Uh, it's, very good. I always, like I said before, I enjoy to see them play in front. I enjoy this kid in training and in, in the game, and I will keep pushing him to be at the top. He has so much to, he has so much to do again. He can uh, do even more, and uh, what he's doing right now is a, uh, is just uh, this talent, and he, he, he showed that he can play in this team. Some interesting mm -hmm. comments to come from Paul Pogba there. He says this is what Manchester United should be doing. The goal should be winning the Premier League. Slowly but surely, Ryan, you're getting this impression that the old Manchester United is slowly coming back. Yeah, it's a strut, um, you know, about the team and getting the likes of Paul Pogba, Fernandez on the ball. And the great teams over the years of United, when them type of players are on the ball, you have options. You have players in running behind, you have the switch, you have players in them little pockets, and that's what you're seeing. You're seeing them little triangles and so many options for the player on the ball. And then you execute the option and, um, yeah, teams are finding it very hard to defend against United because of that reason. The options, the quality, the movement, the penetration and then, of course, at the end of it, devastating finishing. He's still making his way back from a lengthy spell yeah. on the sidelines, of course. So how did he fare for you today? And is your view that his future increasingly looks to be at Old Trafford? Well, I, I, think, I think what people have always asked, nobody's ever questioned his talent, but I think they've gone about the consistency. I think, he, I think what he's doing now, he's playing consistent and, and nobody's doubting that he's one of the best midfield players in the world. I think, I think w w when, when you talk about sort of like this United team and, and me and Ryan are obviously supporters, you're actually excited about watching United. We've seen a lot of poor, probably poor games in the restart, yeah. but every time United have played, you look forward to watching them because of people like Pogba and Fernandez, and, and he's got he's got a maturity about his game since he came back from his injury. And you know what? The, the climate's changed. The financial climate's changed, and there's not many clubs will be able to afford Paul Pogba now. So mm. ultimately, if he's playing in a team where he's happy, he's got great players around him. He looks like he's having fun. Why would you want to go and play anywhere else? That's that's brilliant pass. You know? Yeah. Are you seeing signs that he's returning to the, the, the Paul Pogba that we know in his heyday, not just in the United ship, but Juve as well? In fact, before you get that, Ryan, you said earlier this was one off the training ground, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. You know, I, I think Fernandez um, has seen that Pogba's free, mm. and it was Pogba's really just walking away, not even interested. And all of a sudden, he turns. And the ball's there, and then you see the rest. You know, you see him here. I don't he's know. Not he, even he, I was going to say, is he double bluffing? Because he's yeah, not even. He's not even looking. But then it's the quick movement that he sees that he is actually on. So 
Yeah, I'm going to go with a training ground move. <laughs> but like Phil said, it could be just two players on the day. They've spotted it. And, um, yeah, Fernandez has found his mate. What about the actual finish Great itself? finish. Yeah, Great yeah. finish, yeah. yeah. You can't save those. Because he's used the player as that shield and just mm. bent it uh, around the play and mm. Rain has got no chance. Do, do you know what? Since the restart, there's no better team in the country than Manchester United. There's no better team that's playing... There's no team in the country that's playing a better style of football than Manchester United, scoring as many goals as Manchester United. So over a period of probably the last four or five games, or even beyond that, for the last probably the run that they're on, United at the moment are probably one of the best teams in the country, even though they're so far behind Liverpool, they've not won the league. At this moment in time, I don't see a better team, which gives United massive confidence. Yeah. For the future, particularly. For, for next season. Yeah, of course, yeah, for, for next, next season. season. And if everybody talks about Bruno Fernandes lifting Paul Pogba's game, what about those around him, the others in that starting eleven? Mm. Yeah, um, every player's playing well and playing every game as well. You know, a settled side. So, yeah, all around the pitch, it's about relationships. You know, whether it's the two centre-halves, whether it's the wide man and the full-back, midfield players, you need that chemistry and you're seeing it now. So when you're on the ball, you know where the player's going to yeah. be. You know the run that the player's going to make. So it makes a big difference that it's a settled side, but also there's so much quality in this team mm. at the moment. Mm. Talking of Fernandes, he did, of course, win the penalty, <laughs> um, which broke Villa's hearts, and in rather controversial fashion. Was this a penalty for you? No, it wasn't a penalty. And, and, and you know what? I, th I think it's fair to say that VAR's had an horrendous, probably the last three or four weeks since we've started playing football. He's had a horrendous night. We've seen three decisions. Uh, you see there, he's, he's actually probably a foul for the Villa defender rather than for, for Fernandes. You see his foot there goes over the ball. He's leaning into him. There's a clash. Isn't, that is not a penalty. Nobody in the world think that's a penalty. So why would VAR not... Why would VAR give a penalty? And that's what I can't understand. They didn't see it as a clear and obvious I actually think them. it's having a major, major effect on, on football at this moment in time, the way that VAR is being handled. Yeah, could have a major impact on Aston Villa's future in the Premier League. In fact, talking of which, let's hear now from the Aston Villa boss, Dean Smith. Dean, a desperately disappointing evening for you. Where did it unravel, do you think? Uh, it unravelled with the first goal, I think. I thought we had made a really bright start of the game, um, put them under pressure, had some chances, treasures at the post. They're a quality team who are always going to be a threat on the counter because of the pace that they've got and the quality that they've got. But, you know, uh, it's all changed around on the on the penalty decision. I mean, you know, I can understand Jonathan getting it, John getting it wrong. Um, you know, he's, he's on the pitch, but it, that goes to VAR. I don't know what they're looking at. It's, it's, it's a disgraceful decision, but I can't really tell you what I think about it because I'll get fined. And it's a poor, poor decision. We've got a screen over there that can go, they can go and look at, but they don't seem to be bothered now. Any sympathy for Dean Smith? Right? Yeah, plenty, because, you know, he's prepared right for the game. You can see that the way that Villa started mm -hmm. in United's face, you know, stopping that flow, mm -hmm. um, not letting them play, and then they get a bad decision against them. So, and then United score on a half-time, which is always a killer. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I feel sorry for him because his team started really brightly and with a better team. Let's get another Villa perspective. We heard from him before the, um, the game itself, uh, former Villa midfielder Nigel Ryokoka, as you can see, joins us now. Nigel, good to see you once again. Um, so how do you sum up those 90 minutes? It's, uh, I'm definitely disappointed for Villa, but I think at times, you know, they, they just have to take a bit more responsibility. I just personally feel that as well as they were, you know, well set up, they did sit back. They showed Man United a bit too much respect as, that I would like them to. But at times, even in their defending final third, I just felt that when they could have pressed the, belt, pressed the ball, they didn't seem to be really pressing with any intensity or didn't show me that they were a team really fighting for the survival of staying in the Premier League. And what about the actual um, the penalty decision that led to United's first goal? It, for me personally, I just don't think it was a penalty. I think it's very harsh. And, you know, as uh, Ryan and, and Phil know themselves, goals change games. That definitely wasn't a penalty. And I think that that was probably a, a punch to the stomach for Villa because they did start the game well. But even with starting the game well, it's the fact of they just didn't really look like they have a real goal for it. And I felt that Manchester United just seemed like they were nowhere near playing 
in even second gear. You know, they could have turned it on whenever they wanted to. They were very comfortable. But there's certain things in a game that you look to see about character and players and how really dedicated they are to the cause of are they really fighting for their lives and fighting for survival? And I felt that that was something that I found hard to see in the team display today. You look at the second goal that was conceded, and for me, it's Tyrone Mings should have pressed. He should have made a decision to step forward. And that's all part of the basic foundation that's needed for playing in the Premier League. It's getting in people's faces. It's defending with a purpose. It's you know closing down with a purpose in order to try and win the ball. And those are the basic things that I just didn't see in the Villa players today. Just even just getting in someone's face, you know, just showing that real aggression. Uh, as you can see at the table there, um, Villa now four points adrift of safety with only four games left to play. What's your reading of their situation now? 